So we're still talking about kind of this thermal energy world and exchanging uh, the, the temperature. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the kinetic theory of gases, okay? Um, and so the ideal gas law takes a macroscopic view, right, of gases, right? And so it's going to take like a big picture view. Um, so we're going to look from the outside, look at how, you know, um, there's no really... Um, relationship or relation between the measurables and particles and so what we're going to do now is we're going to switch from that macroscopic world to the microscopic world and so the kinetic theory of gases does that right um, and so we're going to look at that microscopic view of gases um, because we're going to connect measurables to particles um, and so this is just like a set of equations right and so um, we're not going to dive too far into where these equations come from, but just remember, any particle that is moving has a kinetic energy, okay? It doesn't matter what it is. It's a, it could be a car. It could be an, a water molecule. So if there's any kind of motion, it is going to be, it's going to have a kinetic energy associated with it, okay? So the average kinetic energy for the particle or a particle is going to be 3 halves kT. Um, and so, again, I'm not going to go over um, where this equation comes from, but again, K is that Boltzmann constant that we talked about when that um, PV equals NKT, Boltzmann constant, okay? And it's that one point, uh, I got to double check this, it's uh, 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23. Okay, and that's going to be uh, joules per Kelvin, right? Because it's, so it's going to be joules per Kelvin, okay? Um, and because what happens is you need an answer of joules, and if you're multiplying by temperature, you got to put that in the denominator, okay? Now, the pressure of a gas is going to be given by the equation one-third N over V uh, times N times what's called the root mean square, okay? Sometimes you see this VRMS written as V bar squared, okay? And where that comes from is the root mean squared. The way to think about it, it's the root, um, it's the root mean of the squared velocities, right? And so it's, it's this weird equation. So what they mean by RMS is one over N, the square root of one over N, the sum of the x your your x values squared okay it, so one over n or n is the number of measurements and then x i right is the each value so it's it's very close to when we do like standard deviation when we do like x minus x bar squared so it's kind of in that realm so what that means is the kinetic energy the, the average kinetic energy can also be written in our standard equation where we have uh, one half m v rms squared. So the rms really does nothing, right? Because that what that's saying is that that's essentially the average speed of each particle. Okay, that's what it's really saying. Um, uh, again, I'm not going to dive too far into this. It, again, this equation is on your formula sheet, so you don't have to um, get all crazy about like, oh, what do you mean by v rms? It's it's all in your equation sheet. Okay. Now, the stored energy or the potential energy is going to be 3 halves uh, nRT, okay? Um, and so, again, uh, just you don't have to memorize. These equations are all on your formula sheet, okay? So let's look at a couple of examples centered on this kinetic theory, right? And so for us, kinetic theory is just more about calculations than it is about, like, what actually is the kinetic theory. Okay, so part A, what is the average kinetic energy of a gas molecule at 20 degrees? And then find the RMS speed of, nit of a, nitrogen a nitrogen molecule at this temperature. All right, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say K, 
right? Kinetic energy is 3 halves kT. And so the thing that you see is it doesn't matter what the substance is. It just matters what the temperature is, right? Then when you get into the RMS speed, right, that's when you get into the, the substance, right? That's when you get into what, you know, the actual substance. So for part B, we're going to look at nitrogen, right? And not just nitrogen, but a nitrogen molecule. Remember, nitrogen exists as a diatomic molecule. So that means you have to have two nitrogens exist together, okay? So all I'm going to do here is plug in my numbers. 3 halves times 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 times. Now we have to convert this to Kelvin. We're just going to add 273 to it. Right, so we're going to add, so it's going to be end up being 293, and so the kinetic energy or the average kinetic energy of a particle in any gas at this temperature is going to be 6.07 times 10 to the negative 21 joules. Okay, so there's my answer to part A. Now part B, right, we're going to use our average kinetic energy is equal to one half m v r m s squared, but we're going to do it for nitrogen. We don't know what the mass of a nitrogen particle is, and so this is when we have to get into our um, our mass, right? So the mass of N two is going to be two times the mass of one nitrogen, right? So it's fourteen point zero zero six seven, right? And I think that's kilograms per mole, or that's grams per mole, but we need to put this in kilograms per mole. Right? And then we're going to divide that by our Avogadro's number, so 6.022 times 10 to the 23 moles. Right, And so when you do that, we are given the mass of 4.65 times 10 to the negative 26 kilograms. Right, So that's my mass of N2. That's this number right here. Okay. I'm going to solve this for VRMMS, and so it's going to be square root of 2K over M, where K is my kinetic energy, which is my answer to part A. So I'm going to take the square root of 2 times 6.07 times 10 to the negative 21, divided by 4.65 times 10 to the negative 26, All right, and that's going to give me my average, what amounts to my average velocity for all the particles. And it's going to be 510 meters per second. Okay, so what that means is, in um, in a nitrogen gas, right, or a nitrogen gas at 293 degrees Kelvin or 20 degrees Celsius, each particle is moving five, or on average at 510 meters per second. Again, not every particle is going 510, but that's the the approximate value. That's what RMS is really focusing on. All right. Now, the next example, in order to escape Earth's gravity, an object near the top of the atmosphere at an altitude of 100 kilometers must travel away from Earth at 11.1 .1 kilometers per second. This speed is called escape velocity. At what temperature would helium atoms have an RMS speed equal to the, ex the, to the escape velocity? Okay, so I'm going to say Ke equals 3 halves Kt. But I'm also going to set that equal to MVRMS, right, squared. So again, I need to find the mass, right, of a helium atom, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same kind of thing that I did before. I'm going to find um, how, much, uh, how much does a mole of helium at, uh, weigh. So it's going to be 4 grams per mole. So I'm going to do 4 times 10 to negative 3 kilograms per mole. Okay, and if, you know, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 uh, particles, right? I'm sorry, this should be atoms per mole, right? Um, and so when I do that calculation, I'm going to get uh, helium atom weighs has a mass of 6.64 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. Right? And now I'm just going to solve this equation over here for T. And so the, the twos are going to cancel out. And so I'm going to end up with MVRMS squared over 3K. And so I'm going to do 6.64 times 10 to the negative 27th. Sorry about that. Uh, my RMS speed is going to 11.1 .1 times 10 to the 3 
Uh, and I have to do that because that's given to me in kilometers per second. I'm going to multiply it by 1,000 to get me to meters per second. Divided by 3 times 1.38 times 10 to negative 23. That's my Boltzmann constant, or K. And I'm going to get a temperature of 1,900, sorry, 19,761 Kelvin, which is approximately... 19,488 degrees Celsius, okay? And I showed you the, the conversion because um, Quest, you don't know what Quest is gonna ask for. It may ask for in Kelvin, it may ask for in degrees Celsius, right? And so all I did to get to my degrees Celsius temperature is I subtracted 273 from the 19,761 and I got 19,488. Okay, so this really ends what uh, University of Texas calls 8.1, okay, and then in 8.2, we're going to focus on heat and the transfer of heat.